up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel I am gold pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2021 Hyundai Elantra N line courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Hyundai in York PA for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so what did I happen this one today obviously because this is the N line meaning essentially this is the competitor to the Honda Civic SI which means it should be plenty of fun we will be testing everything out about it in this video today of course and to go along with that you also get America's best warranty being five year 60,000 miles bumper to bumper 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty which is great three years of complimentary maintenance as well meaning you don't have to pay for the oil changes tire rotations things like that for the first three years of ownership that's wonderful and so all in all I will be testing out acceleration paddle shifters everything about this one testing out the sound system System, exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so MSRP for the Elantra N line will start at $24,100 power plant on this one is going to be powered from a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 201 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 195 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1500 rpm power sent to front wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual which does come standard on this one or a seven-speed dual clutch which actually is the one we have today that goes for $1,100 if you wanted to tack that on. And that dual clutch does come with rather large gloss black paddle shifters as well. And you guys know we will test those out. I always like to make sure that they do react quickly, especially in a car like the Elantra N-Line. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 6.5 seconds. Top speed 125 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 25 in the city, 34 highway for the manual, 28 in the city. 36 on the highway for the dual clutch that is quite a good mpg number quite honestly for what i'm sure is going to be a very fun to drive car like the elantra n-line so very impressed with that by the way regular unleaded fuel required as well so you only have to fill it up with premium that's also a big plus there but so anyways before we test out the acceleration or the paddle shifters i did want to mention of course the elantra n-line does come with drive modes and by the way the placement for that drive mode button it is extremely large found just to the left of the gauge cluster highlighted in a red kind of circular perimeter it is so interesting how they put such emphasis on the actual drive mode button as opposed to let's say the engine start button which just kind of blends in but that is quite interesting but so anyways it is a bit of a reach especially when you actually want to go changing drive modes while you're driving but it is possible i mean i do have to extend my arm out completely straight in order to change that but it's definitely doable dang i just put it in sport driving mode it did immediately downshift wow it did immediately downshift for me so it is holding the rpms in a much higher level giving me more power on demand it's also going to adjust the throttle response and the steering sensitivity is noticeably heavier let me tell you as well so that is pretty cool they did the drive modes well i just wish it wasn't so much of a reach really to go ahead and change it but i suppose you would get used to it but nonetheless having mentioned now all of that what do you guys said let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put this thing to the test let's test out the paddle shifters here first because like i said they are massive which is pretty cool it gives you a sportier look but to put it in full manual shift mode you can do that just simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting and having said that let's go ahead and do that paddle shifter test and let's see how quickly these things will react for us here all right you guys let's go wow very quick very very quick in this thing honestly this is kind of a uh a lower priced car really for what you get so i was kind of surprised this paddle shifters do react dang quick so well done hyundai for that definitely a very nice acceleration with very quick reacting paddle shifters as well but now having said that let's go ahead and give back full control to the elantra and i'm simply just going to slide the shifter back to the right here and that gives back full control and let's do a quick little acceleration test without me shifting and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed in three two one go <laughs> a little bit of slippage Dang. there it is all right definitely a very nice acceleration did get a little bit of spinning 
um, in first gear there because there's a lot of power being sent to the front wheels, but really no torque steer, just a little bit of spinning, so absolutely no issues whatsoever with that acceleration. And I'm sure the six-speed manual will be just as fun, but the dual clutch is very, very nice in the Elantra M without a doubt. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.2-inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes, it comes in at an extremely respectable 116 feet. Let me tell you guys, that is a wonderful 60 to 0 stopping distance number. Now, it's not like for Mustang GT wonderful, which comes in at 99 feet, but a lot of sedans will come in in the mid 120s or upper 120s. 20 so 116 feet is great absolutely no issues there when it comes to the braking feel certainly not spongy or squishy or anything it does immediately bring you to a stop so as far as braking performance goes hyundai nailed it with the elantra and yet again touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's actually kind of impressing me i didn't expect that much because it is kind of a sportier car and a lot of times with sportier compact cars you can feel a decent amount of the road but with the elantra n it's really a very nice balance to this one so ride quality is pretty much as expected expected and i would say even a little bit better than i personally expected for a car like this so once again well done as far as steering feel goes it depends on which driving mode that you put it in i will say that because there is a very noticeable difference between the driving modes when it comes to the steering sensitivity so i do still have it in that sport driving mode steering sensitivity is a much heavier weight to it which i personally love that's why i'm leaving it there if you were to take it out of that sport driving mode the steering feel does loosen up quite substantially so just wanted to mention that leave it in the sport driving mode that's what i would do because it really does give you a better feeling of being in control of this one so at least that's my personal preference as far as cabin noise goes let me tell you guys cabin noise isn't bad but the best part about it is when you get high up in the rpms or as you are going up higher in the rpms you can hear the turbo spooling up so that is pretty darn cool because of course this is a turbocharged engine so i like hearing that i don't know maybe it's just me but anyways you do get a little bit of wind noise at higher speeds at least but other than that cabin noise is perfectly fine yet again then touching on visibility this is a sedan so you're definitely not going to have any issues there i don't want to spend too much time on that because visibility is definitely on point but that is about it for the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 hyundai elantra n-line all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 hyundai elantra n-line finished in intense blue is our exterior color name of this one but of course the Elantra has been completely redesigned for the 2021 model year in case anybody didn't know already but let's go ahead and start up front on this one end line specific front grille distinguishing itself from the other Elantra trims of course end line badging found in the upper corner of that front grille as well you guys can see that there is also a gloss black front lip to tie in together with that front grille so definitely a very good look to it there you do have some front air curtains down to the corners there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination as well when it comes to those headlights they are projector beam halogen headlights they do of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights of course also coming standard and i love the low hood line in the front as well definitely gives it much more aggressive look up front so overall a very nice looking front end but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right so now since we are around to the side of the elantra end line black window surrounds do come standard on this one and one of the things i really want to point out on this one where the windows actually connect together and also in the back on the regular elantra all of this and all of this is all matte black but on the Elantra N-Line, this is actually all finished in gloss black, which I absolutely love. Gives it a more high-end look to it, a less cheap look to it, really, I should say. So very, very nice look to the side, just strictly because of that, quite honestly. A lot of cars give it that matte black look. I've never liked that. So definitely a huge fan of the gloss black look between those windows there. So I wanted to point that out to you guys. Of course, you can find some N-Line badging on that front fender on the side there as well. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are power adjustable gloss black side mirrors. They will be heated then as well. 
Also, body color door handles as expected there. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, they are 18 inch five spoke alloys. They do come standard with summer tires. However, all season tires are optional. You can of course get them. And I love the body line creases of the Elantra. I said this in my regular Elantra video as well, not specific to the end line that we have today, but the body line creases of this one, all of the angles, it definitely makes for a very unique look like nothing else on the road. So definitely a huge fan of the side profile of the Elantra end. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one because it gets better. All right, so this is probably my favorite look to the Elantra end when you make your way around back. First thing I wanna mention, gloss black shark fin antenna found all the way to the top, but then you also get a gloss black rear deck lid spoiler as well to tie in together with all of the other gloss black accents, of course. Launcher lettering can be found spelled out horizontally back there on the rear trunk. LED tail lights coming standard on this one. Very bright illumination at night, and I love the design to them as well. It goes with that angular design of the side profile. The taillights match in with it perfectly, so very unique look to it yet again. Gloss black rear diffuser all the way to the bottom. You guys can see that. And of course, a single exhaust outlet, but with dual chrome tips on the passenger side there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around back of the Elantra and there are a few different ways to go ahead and open up that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob itself. That is one way. There is actually a hidden black button on the trunk itself just above the Hyundai logo. That is yet another way. And there's actually a button on the floor on the driver's side here. That is yet a third way to go ahead and open up that rear trunk. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, you can fold down those rear seats. There is a 60-40 split, so that gives you a bunch of extra space then if you needed it. And underneath the cargo floor of that trunk, there is actually a spare tire back there in case anybody was wondering whether it's the fix the flat or the spare tire. It is the spare tire in the Elantra and which I personally prefer. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 38 inches even. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back here. Rear center armrest with cup holders is going to come standard. There is no rear ventilation though. Really don't need it in this size of a vehicle, but there's no recharging ports then either. So did want to mention that to you guys, but let's now go ahead and make our way up to the front seat. Six way power driver's seat with power lumbar coming standard. Leather cloth combination is going to come standard as well. Essentially the cloth part is all on the middle part of the seat and the leather is going to be found on the corners with some red stitching then. You do have the end logo towards the top portion of the seating then as well. Bolstering is done fairly well, not the very most bolstering out there, but it's definitely done very well as far as that goes. These front seats, by the way, are going to come heated for both driver and passenger as well. So I do want to mention that. So overall, seats are relatively comfortable. Not the very most comfortable seats that I've tested recently, but still not too bad. So no issues there. Let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped coming standard with some red stitching. So that is pretty darn cool. And the 10 and 2 grips are definitely bolstered quite nicely. Definitely a little bit on the thicker side, which I prefer, especially in a car like the N-Line. So big fan of that. But let's go ahead and now make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side. And when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the hold circular button in the middle there, that is going to be your remote start so you can actually heat this thing up on super cold days so you're not freezing by the time you actually get inside so that is super nice as well so i wanted to mention that but essentially it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake 
and press that black engine start button, which is located kind of just below of the infotainment screen, which we'll get to in a little bit here. But now taking a look at the gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is front and center, and there is a small digital display found all the way to your right, which can be adjusted by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel. You have different things you could scroll through, like your trip A, trip B, of course, there is actually a digital speedometer you could choose to display up there if you wanted to, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's some tire pressure information, safety information, and the list goes on. So pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. I personally will probably leave it on the digital gauge readout. I think that's pretty cool. But nonetheless, let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here. Power sunroof does come standard on the Elantra end line. That's pretty cool. Black headliner also coming standard to go along with that alloy foot pedals. I loved seeing that. It is definitely a sportier look. So like the, the Elantra end line has that as well. Wireless phone charger is also going to come standard. That is actually located directly in front of the shifter. So that is pretty darn cool. Dual zone climate control also coming standard. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. And you actually can get an auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls. That is going to be optional for $295 if you wanted to go ahead and add that. But I like how everything is kind of tilted more driver centric, like the Nissan GTR, for example. I like how everything's kind of turned and this large bar kind of thing that I guess you can hold on to if you want just to the right of the shifter there. It kind of reminds me, if you guys have seen the new C8 Corvette, it reminds me exactly of that because this is what the Corvette does. I think they put buttons on theirs, but still, it is a pretty cool look to it. I like it. I like the red stitching that goes throughout the doors. It kind of ties into the air vents go all the way across basically so overall it's a very nice look there is some cheap ish materials going on here like the center bar here i was mentioning next to the shifter it is all plastic kind of so i'm not a huge fan of the plastic finishes it would have been cool if they finished that in leather or something but this isn't a luxury car so it's pretty much as expected you do have in front of the shifter a 12 volt power outlet two usb charging ports just behind the shifter you have dual cup holders and a decent amount of space within the center armrest then as well so overall it's pretty much as expected not the very best interior quality but it's not bad it gets the job done but it does get a heck of a lot better with the tech let me tell you why eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard bluetooth and audio streaming also standard but the very best part wireless android auto apple carplay also comes standard that is wonderful i hate wires cluttering up my vehicles when you hook your smartphone up to the vehicle to get free navigation on that screen or whatever but with the Elantra N-Line, it's all wireless. You don't have to worry about it. You got wireless phone charger, wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It's a beautiful thing. Loving it. So anyways, you can also check out your climate control information up on that infotainment screen and your radio information as well. And by the way, Elantra N-Line does come standard with six speakers. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn this one on, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> It's not bad. It's not the best. It's six speakers. It's pretty much as expected. It's not going to blow you away or anything, but wouldn't have minded if they put maybe an upgraded sound system in the Elantra N-Line because a lot of enthusiasts are going to be looking at this car and typically enthusiasts are going to want a little better sound system than a basic six speakers. But anyways, it's my personal opinion. Sound system's not bad. It's just, it's average. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Elantra N-Line in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the entire your screen well done very high quality as well so well done yet again and that of course is going to lead us into safety and so front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system it's all pretty boring at this point but also coming standard across the board forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert lane keep assist lane following assist driver attention warning system high beam assist and safe exit warning as well that is definitely quite a bit that comes standard across the board so i am a huge fan of that but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the elantra n-line Great design for this one. I do love the redesign for the 2021 Elantra overall. Great warranty, of course. You got 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, meaning if you were kind of hesitant on the turbocharged engine that we have here, that makes this one super fun to drive. 
you don't have to be as worried because you know it's warranted for 10 years. Most people don't even keep their vehicles for 10 years. So that is a beautiful thing right there. Not to mention the transmission, the dual clutch, also warranted for 10 years. So that's a brilliant thing. Three years free maintenance, that's gonna save you some money there. And the exhaust note was quite good on this one as well, of course. The only constructive criticism I could say is if they upped the interior quality a little bit on this one, I would definitely not be upset because there is quite a bit of black plastics in this one but having said that they did do most everything right including that wireless android auto apple carplay that was a wonderful thing but let me know what you guys think of the new elantra n in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.